俺はこのゲームを試合だと思うことにしただから遠慮しない私だって遠慮しない今すぐそれ下げて今無理やり犯すことだってできんだやってみろよ<笑>大丈夫私の顔に傷つけたね私の全存在をかけてあんたを否定してあげるはい、こんにちは。ニアティーは、フィルムコミックスエクスプレイン。今日は、今日は、今日は、今日は、今日は、今日は、今日は、今日は、今日は、今日は、今日は、今日は、今日は、今日は、今日は、今日は、今日は、今日は、今日は、今日は、今日は、今日は、今日は、今日は、今日は、今日は、今日は、今日は、Both the events in the novel and film take place in a fictional fascist Japan known as the Republic of Greater East Asia. In this dystopic state, the government controls every aspect of life, and anything that threatens its power is banned, including conflicting ideologies and even rock music, which is seen as rebellious in spirit. In the novel, it's explained that the government had established a military program called the Battle Experiment No. 68, which forced a randomly selected class of secondary students to take arms against one another until only one of them remained. It should also be noted that any student from any school could also volunteer to join the class chosen for that year's Battle Royale, an initiative aimed at culling the rebellious teens that were the most danger to the government. While the program was supposedly created as a form of military research, the televised event was actually a means of terrorizing the people against rebellion. In the film, however, it's understood that the controversial piece of legislation was actually aimed at curbing a rise in youthful civil disobedience, which was getting pretty out of hand. Prior to its distribution throughout Japan, Takami had entered the novel into the 1997 Japan Horror Fiction Awards. Interestingly, all three members of the selection committee agreed that it was the best work out of the four finalists with regards to its story, structure, and subject matter. However, they were all concerned about the reputation of the competition if they were to promote such a controversial novel, opting instead to award no winner out of respect for both Takami and the public whom they thought would be outraged. After its publication in 1999, Battle Royale became a contentious success in Japan, quickly selling over 1 million copies before being translated into nearly a dozen languages. And the rest is, of course, history. Though hugely controversial during its initial release in 2000, the film was also a commercial success, going on to become one of the highest grossing films in Japan for that year, spawning a sequel and a manga series written by Takami himself. Regarded as one of Fukusaku's best films, since its release on DVD, Battle Royale has gone on to develop a global cult following and has inspired a litany of foreign films like The Tournament, The Belko Experiment, The Condemned, and The Hunger Games, which all feature a similar format consisting of a group of people either choosing or being forced to hunt each other to survive. The film has also inspired a number of comic books, mangas, and anime films, as well as serving as a catalyst for a new genre of games in which players competed to be the last one standing in a shrinking battlefield, with games like Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, Apex Legends, and of course Fortnite Battle Royale, all owing their success to the ideas explored in the novel and film. Not only has its form and structure influenced pieces of literature that followed it, but its style has also inspired many filmmakers like Quentin Tarantino, who'd considered it to be the best film he'd seen in over a decade. Along with Grindhouse Cinema of the 70s, Battle Royale also served as inspiration for Quentin Tarantino's Kill Bill films, which were no strangers to graphic portrayals of unrestrained violence. I should also mention that Kill Bill co star Chiaki Kuriyama as Gogo, who was also in the original Battle Royale movie, where she plays Takako Chugasu, a girl in yellow sweatpants who is accosted by one of her peers who attempted to force himself on her, which consequently transforms her into the very incarnation of vengeance itself. Sound familiar? Now, it's explained that the Battle Royale event can only end when there is a sole survivor left behind, and prior to the game, each student is fitted with a neck collar that monitored their positions, vital signs, and other information, with any attempt to remove or otherwise tamper with the collar, causing it to explode. They're also given one bag of supplies each, which contained water, rations, a compass, a map, and a randomly selected weapon. The weapons would range from blades, pistols, to full automatic guns, as well as the occasional surprise, such as a boomerang, paper fan, GPS, and poison. 
The island they must fight on is divided into a grid network of more or less equally large zones, and once in a while, one of these will be deemed a danger zone. When that happens, the net collars of any students inside it would detonate, killing them in the process. To discourage the students from being pacifists, if no one died within a 24 hour period, everyone's collars would detonate and nobody would survive. And it's all these little rules that drive otherwise happy and sane people to do unspeakable things. Additionally, in the film adaptation, the students are told that if more than one person is still alive at the end of the 72 hour time limit, everyone's collars would also detonate, which meant that even if you teamed up for the majority of the event with a handful of friends, or even a lover, you would eventually have to either let them take you out, or take them out yourself to ensure that you prevailed. It's no wonder then that students that would otherwise be harmless in the real world are seen doing atrocious things to their peers in the name of survival. Given all of this, it's clear that these rules and the Battle Royale Act itself was designed to instill paranoia and fear amongst friends on the island. But more than that, the scheme was an ingenious way of sowing seeds of mistrust in the general public. Driving the point home that you cannot trust anyone around you would serve to only further discourage the act of revolution and rebellion amongst the masses. From the onset of the film, the students being forced into the battle royale do not believe, much like the viewer I should add, that such a thing could even exist. I mean, their reaction is one of absolute shock and disbelief as the notion of a government passing a law that would see an entire class of students kill each other is utterly insane. But they, like us, are thrown headfirst into the madness by their former teacher Katana, who I should probably add was disrespected and even attacked by them, forcing him to leave the school. And in a way, he is the physical embodiment of the country's distrust of children, with his desire for order and respect mirroring that of the dystopic Republic of Greater East Asia. Now, Kitano explains why they've been chosen and briefly goes over the Battle Royale Act prior to killing one of the students for whispering while he spoke. He then shows the class the dead body of their new teacher, who begged on their behalf for them to be set free, moments before turning their attention to the television. <laughs> The juxtapositioning of the grim news the presenter on the TV is giving the unfortunate students to the happy and upbeat way that she delivers the lines creates this jarring and unsettling feeling of hopelessness. This disconsolateness is further punctuated by the musical score, which incorporates several pieces of Western classical music, along with Masumicho Amano's original compositions, that make it feel as though you're being violently pulled through a museum of horrors against your will. A great example of the use of music to allude to the vacuum of wretchedness the students would now find themselves in was the insertion of Dies Array from Giuseppe Verdi's Requiem in the film's overture and other specific moments throughout the film which use vigorous rhythms, sublime melodies and dramatic contrasts akin to the melodramatic and somewhat operatic emotions felt by the students. One by one, the students fall at the hands of each other, spurred into action by their impending annihilation, and helped along with an assortment of death tools. A number of the deaths are caused by a select few that actually enjoy what they're doing, but for the most part, the kids either attempt to hide or work together, which makes their eventual downfall all the more tragic. This sense of tragedy is best encapsulated in my favourite scene in Battle Royale, and one of my favourite scenes in film in general, which I call the poisoning of Shuya's food. In it, we see a group of girls who are great friends cooking a meal and discussing what to do next while an injured Shuya recovers above them. Just to provide some context, at the beginning of the film, Shuya was attacked by a desperate fellow student named Oki, and in the ensuing struggle, Oki was killed when his weapon impaled his own head. And though this was an accident on Shuya's part, a girl named Yuko, who had witnessed the death, blames him for the incident. Unbeknownst to the other girls, Yuko poisoned Shuya's food with potassium cyanide, which was the weapon she'd been assigned, but his food is suddenly snatched out of her hands and eaten by a friend Yuka. Yuka's death then makes the rest of the girls turn on each other, and they all end up dying in a violent shootout, while the culprit, who had taken refuge behind them, survives the entire ordeal, only to take her own life, unable to live with the fact that she had led to the inadvertent deaths of all of her best friends. Shuya and Noriko, who were the protagonists of the film, make it to the final four, along with a psychopathic Kazoo who'd volunteered for the event, and former winner Shogo, who'd also re-entered the contest with the aim of dismantling the battle royale from the inside, in protest for having been forced to kill his girlfriend in the previous event. Kazo dies and Shogo seemingly kills Shoya and Noriko before confronting Kitana who waited for the victor. However, it soon revealed that Shogo had faked their deaths and had actually found a way to disable their collars. 
The three survivors then go face to face with Katano, who aims a gun at Noriko and is shot by Shoyo, but they come to find that he was actually armed with a water gun, revealing that he had no intent on harming Noriko, who he'd mentally substituted for his own daughter, who, like his students, didn't respect him and actually loathed his presence. The three survivors then escape the island on a fishing boat, but Shogo eventually succumbs to his wounds after telling them he was finally happy and at peace after having found friendship in the last place he thought he ever would. While it's easy to dismiss Battle Royale as a senseless and fiendish depiction of calamitous violence towards children, the film, like its source material, is actually in my view a thought-provoking satire of adult paranoia, authoritarianism, societal sadism, and teenage nihilism, all wrapped up in an entertaining ball of bloody desperation and fury. This is exemplified by the fact that most of the students in the class were good kids, with the exception of Nobu, who was the actual person who attacked their former teacher Katano, Mitsuko, who admittedly was mistreated by every adult she'd ever trusted, and Kazu, who technically volunteered himself into the Battle Royale program, hoping to go on a massacre. With Fukusaku's death soon after the release of the film, and partway through the shooting of the film's sequel, his son Kenta, who I'd mentioned had adapted the novel to film, picked up the mantle and took over directing. Unfortunately, Battle Royale 2 Requiem would never reach the same heights of its predecessor, in part due to its confusing plotline, bad acting, a lack of socio-political commentary, and the missing vision of Kinji that made the original film a masterpiece. Filled with the torments, hormones, psychodramas, and sense of devil-may-care optimism of early high school, set to the backdrop of a dystopic future where students are sent to a barbarous island and forced to become Rambo in order to survive, Battle Royale is a blunt reminder of the dangers of authoritarianism and the risks it poses to the healthy functioning of society and the need to challenge all who stand in the way of liberty and freedom. Well, that's all for today, folks. A big thanks to all of you guys who requested we explore Battle Royale. Don't forget to hit subscribe and click the notification icon to stay up to date on all my content. And if there's anything else you'd like to request, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by. え、ライフ人たちは相談して、この法律を作りました。バトルロワイヤル。そこで今日は皆さんに。みんな入れた方がいいぞ。何年<笑>